Hello and good morning, Cisco Networking Academy instructors taking the Python Programmability Initiative course. In this video tutorial, we're going to be taking a brief look again at the JSON library, keeping in mind that the JSON library needs to be imported with the standard distribution that we downloaded from python.org. However, once we import the JSON library, there are a number of different methods that are going to be extremely useful for us to parse and process JSON data. In this video, our focus will be on the load or the JSON.load and the JSON.loads, plural, with an S at the end, methods. So if we were to scroll down and take a look here, you can see there's JSON dump, which we've already talked about in JSON dumps. So now we're gonna be talking about JSON load, which does nothing more than take a file that contains JSON data and it's going to return to us or give us a Python dictionary. Now, it's going to read this in from a file. And if we remember the comment I made in the previous video tutorial, when we're dealing with the singular version of these methods, in other words, dump and load, we're talking about working with files. So we're either reading to or writing files when we use dump and load. And so there's load and a quick write up. And then here is loads. And again, loads is also very straightforward. And it's just going to allow us to deserialize as it says right here. And what that means is we're going to be taking a string. And you could also use bytes or a byte array, but we're interested in the string data type. So you could take a string with and in a string with that has inside of that string, JSON data or a JSON object, which would be in the form of a Python dictionary, possibly, or maybe a JSON array. But it's going to allow us to deserialize that string, to change it from a string, right, or to convert it from a string to a Python object, which is going to be our dictionary. So let's dive in to Replit. Again, this is going to be very useful for us here in Replit. You can see I've already staged a file, and the name of the file is issdata.json. And so all this is is the current longitude latitude and a timestamp for the location of the International Space Station. Again, this information can be easily downloaded so that you can manipulate it by going to api.open-notify.org forward slash iss-now.json. And here we have the data in the raw format. If I was to click on the raw icon on the right using the JSON Viewer Google Chrome plugin, this is what we would see in a little bit easier to read format. So let's drop back into Replit and let's get into the main.py file where we're going to go ahead and remember we need to import from JSON and I'm going to show you another way to do things. So from JSON import load and loads. Now let's say I want to dump and dumps as well. We could do it like that. So instead of having individual statements from JSON import load, from JSON import loads, I can simply do it like this and get more than one specific method. So we're going to leave it right there. And then we're going to come down and we're going to say JSON string data. Or actually, let's say Python string data here. That might be even better. We'll say Python string data now that I'm thinking about this. And we're going to assign it the value of a string. However, what's going to be in that string? Well, let's step over here. Let's take a look at the raw data. And we could have grabbed this out of our ISS data JSON file here, but we just stepped over to Google Chrome for a second. And let me paste that in right there. So now what we have here is a string. In fact, I can prove that to you by saying type, oops, sorry, by saying type, and we've got our, hold on one second here, there we go, by saying type Python string data. And we're going to print out what data type Python string data actually is. And let me pull back these extra spaces here. Let's run our program. And it looks like we have an error. And am I missing? I certainly am. I am missing my closing parentheses. All right. So let's run it again. And you can see it is an object from the class factory, right? Remember, classes are factories that create objects. And it's an object from 
the string uh, class. All right, so now that we have that data, we're gonna go ahead and use JSON loads because maybe you have the JSON data and maybe it's in a string format like this, but we wanna go ahead and take out that JSON data and then maybe do something with it. So here's what we're gonna say now. I'm gonna go ahead and say ISS um, JSON data and we're going to use loads and I can simply say uh, Python string data. And so what we're doing now, right, is the deserialization. In other words, we're gonna be capturing in that variable box, or you can think of it like this, that variable will be referencing what we receive back from the JSON loads method, which is basically taking a string and it's going to give me a Python object. What kind of Python object? Well, it's gonna give us a dictionary. In fact, we can confirm that if I was to say type ISS JSON data, and we've got our closing parentheses there that I didn't wipe out by accident. And let's go ahead and run this program. So you can see here that Python string data, it is in fact a string. And when we deserialize, in other words, take that JSON data out of the string, we end up with a Python dictionary. So now that we have a Python dictionary, what could we do that would not have been as easy to do with that JSON data or the Python dictionary as a string? Well, we can now go ahead and easily reference things by saying ISS JSON data, and maybe I want to see the timestamp. And we're actually going to print this out here. And let me, oops. And let's go back to the beginning here and let's go ahead and print that out. So from the interactive interpreter, without the print statement, that would have worked. However, we need the print statement here in the file. And maybe I want to see, and let's go ahead and say uh, ISS JSON data. And we are interested in, whoops. But I'll tell you what, I do not like the way that this continues to pop up here in front of me. So we're going to print out the ISS JSON data. And let's see, let's take a look at the ISS underscore position. And maybe we're interested in the latitude. And so this is one way to make that happen. So let's go ahead and run the program here. And you can see that there is our timestamp in there is the latitude. And so that's deserializing Python data that's a string that contains within that string this JSON data, or in other words, a Python dictionary. And that's a use case for JSON loads. We're loading in a Python string that contains JSON data, and we're going to go ahead and deserialize it or take out that JSON data so we could use it as a Python dictionary. So the next one that we're gonna talk about here, the next method we're gonna talk about with JSON, the JSON library, is the load, the singular, meaning we're gonna be working with a file, and that's why we have this issdata.json file here. So how would we do that? Well, we're gonna take the JSON data out of that file, and it's gonna give me a Python dictionary. So again, you could look at this as, well, we already have a Python dictionary in that file, right? Um, because it's in the format of a Python dictionary, and that's correct. But maybe you had a Git request that ran, like in our previous video, that then wrote that information into a file, uh, the JSON data into a file, and now we're just going to go ahead and we're gonna open it and read in that JSON data to get a Python dictionary, which we could then go ahead and use. And so we would simply say with open, ISS data.json. Now, do I need to put in the R? And the answer is we do not, because by default, the open function is looking for, or by default, the open function will be read. Now, the same thing here with the F. I could put F, I could put files, I could put my file. This is just simply, think of it as a placeholder, sort of a file descriptor for this file that we're opening here that's going to reference the file that we've opened. And now I'm going to go ahead and say Python 
dictionary. So the Python dictionary we're going to get when we say load f. Again, we're loading in, reading in that JSON data out of issdata.json, the file. And I'm assigning what we read in to the variable Python dictionary, or this variable is referencing that data right there, which we load. And the JSON load method is going to produce a Python dictionary. And how can we check that? Well, let's go ahead and do this. Print type, and let's check Python dictionary. And let's see what we get when we run this command. And let's get that box out of the way. And you can see right there that we have an object from the class dictionary. All right. Now, well, what could we do with this? Well, just like a Python dictionary, I can access the information. In fact, if we were to simply pull down those two lines right there, again, we're working with a Python dictionary now. I would just need to change the name of the variable, Python dictionary, and then do the same thing below. And again, we're parsing this information, this Python dictionary, just like we did previously with JSON loads. And there you go. We end up with the information that we were looking for. However, remember here, we read it in as a file, whereas up here, what we were doing is we were taking a string, right? We were taking a string and converting it into a Python dictionary. All right, well, that is going to do it for the tutorials on JSON loads and JSON load, as well as the other ones that we did for JSON dump and dumps. All right, well, hopefully this has given you a better understanding and some more tools for your Python toolbox in order to process, read, write, and work with JSON data. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope I've earned the privilege of your time, and I hope to see you in the next video.